Hey everybody, we are here finally. I'm here with Scott. Hey, hey how's it? Camera just showed off. Um, we're having a little bit of issue. Oh, and now his camera shut off. Okay, so this is what we've been going back and forth the whole time. Okay, so we're good. All so, right. <laughs> we've been having a little bit of issue, so I'm, I'm, you know, late as as per usual. But uh, we were really trying to make this work. Um, instead of saying hi to everybody individually tonight, I y'all been waiting long enough, so. Uh, I'm not going to do the roll call. Hi, everybody. I hope that you are doing well tonight. And I'm excited to speak to Scott here. Uh, I mean, Scott's never been on my channel. We actually, me and Scott never spoke prior to last night. So uh, this is going to be fun, I think. Oh, I know. So I'm going to play my little intro and then we're going to get into it. So I'm going to play my intro. Scott, thanks for being here. And um, Again, if you see me drop down for some reason, it's because my audio sucks. I've got to reboot. Okay. So if you see me disappear, I'll be right back. Okay, so. Oh. 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 Okay, so Scott, I have to say I'm in um, new territory right now because you've been on this show and you've you've been on two different uh, spinoffs of the show, yeah. two of which I don't watch. So I can okay. tell you that I've never seen you on TV at all. I don't. I don't uh, take it personal. I don't take it personal. That's all. You know, with me, there's just too many spinoffs of the show to cover, and like I'm a one person army here. So yeah. uh, you were in, but you were in Love and Paradise, right? Love and Paradise season three and the final season of The Family Chateau. So what made you decide to go on Love and Paradise? Were you a fan of the show prior to you joining? No, actually, uh, my backstory, I've been a respiratory, um, I'm fifty, going to be 53 March 23rd, have a birthday coming up. Oh, my birthday is the 27th. <laughs> oh really? Get out of here! <laughs> awesome. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna be 53 next week. Uh, I, I've been a respiratory a registered respiratory therapist for 27 years. What is a res What is a respiratory therapist? Uh, I, so I have a bachelor's degree. Uh, like I did the associates, and I get my bachelor's. But it's like an anesthesiologist or pulmonologist where we maintain the airway but i don't have a doctorate so we maintain the ventilators we put the tube in your trachea we manage on the ventilator so that's kind of how i i've been doing this my whole career you know any any patients that come in the er the icu respiratory distress we have a variety of medications what uh, bronchodilators or inhaled steroids to reverse the bronchospasm we have different devices to augment your breathing and then the final step is putting a tube in your trachea put you on the ventilator so i've been doing this for 20 almost 20 well 28 years and then both my son's a respiratory therapist my daughter's an occupational therapist so but to answer your question i was um i was doing the deployment to new york when covid first happened okay, wait, wait. so forgive yeah. my ignorance like are you considered is that a nurse are you considered a nurse? is that an office? no I'm a respiratory no? therapist no respiratory my job is so it's different. I, I really don't know about like this different places and medical. Yeah, so if anybody has respiratory distress in the ER, the nurse would call respiratory stat and we would address, we would assess the patient and determine what their needs are. And if basically it's airway management de devices to, to help them with their breathing, medications to help them with their breathing. That's our job. That's, that's primarily our job. So and there's been that for almost 30 years. Yeah, almost three years. So I was a bouncer prior to going, you know, I was Well, in you look like you could be a bouncer. I'm not going to. I, I still, I still, God, I still, I'm at for 52 years old. I mean, I'm not as big as I used to be, but I, I've always maintained fitness has always been a big part of my life. But yeah, I worked as a bouncer. I was a family man, raising a family, going to college. So I'd work the clubs till two in the morning and I'd go to college, the, you know, four hours later until I finished school, sat for my boards. And I've been doing it 28 years. So to answer your question, um, I was deployed to New York during COVID. 
Uh, the most ventilators I ever had was during the H1N1 swine flu. I had and when you say deployed, deployed by whom? FEMA. FEMA. They they when when COVID first hit New York, it was it was it was crazy. It was like anarchy. There was like at the hospital I went to, we were managing 300 ventilators a night, and my average caseload was 25 ventilators a night with a 80 percent mortality rate. Well, you know, we um I, we, we were briefly talking last night, but like you know, we, um. I, you know, we're from, you know, the area I grew up uh, in Brooklyn and Long Island, and I've lived in the New York City area uh, pretty much most of my life. And when COVID hit here, it was, you know, obviously we got hit the hardest and I could, you know, we were doing Uber Eats deliveries in Manhattan, North yep. Jersey, Long Island, Staten Island. So, well, I they, really I, hard. yeah, I was deployed to Long Island and, um, and I remember the first, like the cafeterias, the at all every every space recovery rooms, everything was converted into makeshift ICUs, negative pressure rooms. So, like you know, I was doing like twenty five ventilators. Long story short, I was doing multiple deployments in New York for the first year, working on the governor's executive order because. I didn't even have license in New York at that time. They just had all of us come, and then we were working under. I was working under my Florida license, so the governor. Like brought, when you say license, what kind of license do you get? Like, like okay, I'm so unclear about the. I want to know more about the like. Well, like, like is nursing, there a degree that you need to be a respiratory therapist? Like, yeah, you, well, there's a national credential that we have. We sit for national boards, and then you for respiratory, we have to have uh, an individual state license for any state you work in. Unlike nursing, they have compact licensing, which covers 48 out of the 51 states. So they can work under one license within 48 states. For us, we have to apply for individual licenses. We don't have compact licensing yet. So I have a New York license, a Florida license, Michigan, uh, West Virginia, and then COVID, we were issued temporary licenses wherever we were deployed to. And had you worked with like FEMA like that in the past? Uh, just only certain contracts that were FEMA where they, they had it's uh, they provide housing, they provide everything. But you were working six, 12 hour shifts, typically nights a week with only one day off a week. The money was great, but it came at a cost. You didn't have a life You're like you were working every day. But I was working 72 hours a week. OK, so you're in New York and you were deployed there. You're, you're helping out um, because we got hit the hardest here. Yeah. And, um, so what? All right, so you're here. So, so here's what happens. So they opened up, they finally started opening up the gyms in New York, but you had to wear a mask. So when I was training at the gym, I became friends with Alejandro. Alejandro was dating Nicole, Lydia's daughter. And he was yes. he Park Slope, Brooklyn. We became friends and we started talking. He invited me, you know, I was helping him with tips on the gym. And he invited me to his bar one night when they kind of started opening things up. This is probably like a year later when COVID first hit. So then we became friends. We took a photo. Uh, Nicole showed the photo to, to Lydia. Lydia liked how I looked. And then the rest is history. We started wait, messing. Wait, wait. So, but that you were with Lydia after the Love and Who were you with on Love and Paradise? I was with Lydia. And then I was, and then my ex-girlfriend Liz came back into the picture. I'm just giving you the backstory. Of, okay, so I didn't. I, okay, so I didn't I, know that you were. Okay, again, yeah. I didn't watch you on TV. No, so no, no, no. I didn't we know that you were with Lydia on Love. Like I didn't know that that was. The yeah, so I was with Lydia on Love in Paradise, but then my ex-girlfriend. So this is what happened. So Lydia and I are talking for like a year, year almost a year, and then TLC reached out to me and said, "Hey, would you like to?" participate in love and paradise and we'll follow you and Lydia. And I never met Lydia yet. We just were, you know, when I was doing all these deployments, I went from New York, I went to Michigan, I went to Saipan near Guam, and I was still talking to Lydia in text messages. And then a, a, two weeks before I did the, the production for love and paradise, my ex-girlfriend Liz, who I was with for about a year in Colombia, reached out to me and I was in love with her and you know she just kind of fell off the map so she came back in my life I told her hey I'm talking to this I'm talking to Lydia I have to be transparent about things I'm getting ready to do this show and then um she goes well I'd like to continue and you know we start talking again so when I I I and everyone got mad at me I said well why did you go to I'm loving paradise if you're Lydia I was like listen I could have did Love in Paradise, not mention my ex-girlfriend Liz in Columbia and not bring her up at all. And just, you know, see how things played out with me and Lydia. But when I saw that- well, Tell me about Liz in Columbia. How long were you with her? Uh, Almost uh, like a year. 
almost a year. Like, and I'd visit her in Columbia and stuff like that. And, and okay, so she's from Columbia, lives there, like, you know. Yeah, has she been she's here? like, no, she lives in Cali, Columbia. Okay, but has she, has she been here at all? Liz? No. Okay. No. So, um, all right, so you were doing it for a year, so, so I'm sorry, keep going. What, so what she, had, she had a lot of issues within her, you know, just, um, she's got a lot of health issues and anxiety and different things going on, so. Who, Liz um, or Lydia? Liz, 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 okay. Liz kind of fell off the map. And, uh, and then, you know, I, you know, I reached out through email a few times just to make sure she was okay. Cause she had like a traumatic childhood and things going on that I don't want to talk about, but I understand why she, it was hard for her to get close to anybody because she had like a lot of things going on, going on, uh, within, um, her past. So I, I met up with Lydia. We started talking. I did the. I started doing. Well, the show. Okay, I'm gonna cut you off again. I'm sorry. Because yeah. I'm curious, and I don't. I don't know you, so this is a different type of interview for me because I didn't watch you on the show, and I don't know much. Yeah, about yeah, no. Um, uh, prior to Liz, had you? Um, did you date people, women internationally, or like, did you kind of keep it here? Like, uh, I, I, I was going to uh, Cartagena a lot with my friends and oh, where Joan stuff. Wilder goes from, um, oh, yeah, I went, I used to go, listen, once I got like, I did, I was, it was my backstory. I was married for 20, uh, 22 years with my ex-wife, 25. Including and was your ex-wife from here? Yeah. Yeah. We like, we grew up, she was from Long Island. I was, oh, from we okay. met in, we met in high school. We're in we were Long Island. Sweethearts. She got pregnant. Where in Long Island is she from? School year and then we were together 25 years total i've been divorced for 10 years in the last 10 years because i'm from brooklyn from bay ridge I, and i grew up with freestyle music you know like Steve okay well Pete. scott i i grew up in bensonhurst till i was seven and then yeah I, like oh, and I, then I, 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 bensonhurst with all the italians i mean i didn't care well, hello you know uh and then i moved to long island the, afterwards so the uh, quizettes the quizettes cuisine yeah, uh, so, did you grow up are you are what are, did you grow up in brooklyn I well, I divided my time between Brooklyn and when I went to high school, I I grew up near near Tampa, but I was still spending my summer and Christmas in Brooklyn with my cousin, my family, because I I missed it. I was in Spring Hill, like north of Tampa, and I was like, this place sucks. Like so, like but then I met my wife in high school, and we were into freestyle music. We were, we used to go down to Tampa and Clearwater, all the freestyle clubs. And like, um, and I was Judy, like, Judy Torres Torres and all them good. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Lizette Melendez follows me on Instagram. I was like, well, well, that's my favorite song, Lizette. Together Forever by Lizette Melendez. It's that's like, right. One, so, my so, song. Uh, so then, you know, I was like, that was like starstruck when Lizette started following me on Instagram. Like, I was like, oh, giddy. I was like, oh, I'd be God. too. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So then, you know, I was with her 25 years. We've been divorced 10. But my ex-wife was Sicilian Italian, so I always gravitate towards Latinas or dark skin, fiery, fiery people. Oh man! Well, I love the contrast difference, especially when, when you know. When we, I love the and you know when we're naked. I like to see my contrast, my pinkness and her darkness. I fucking oh, excuse me. That's I, okay. You're good. I love it. I love it. Uh, uh, all right. So all right. So anyway, I've been divorced. I, I was divorced uh, ten years ago. About. And always dated. I started dating Latinas again. I dated a Brazilian, and, I, and then that didn't work out. And then I ended up uh, dating a, a few Colombians at Tampa Bay area. And then I decided I'm um, gonna go to Colombia. So I got my, I started hanging out with my buddies, going to Cartagena, having a great time. And then on one of the trips to Cartagena on Bumble, I matched up with Liz. And then we just started talking. And then I thought she was just gonna be like a hookup, but then I fell in love with the girl. So uh, that was it. So, you know, you didn't um, date people in different countries just for the sake of being on TV and being on the show. Originally. No, 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 no. I didn't even, the only, the only thing when I was doing, um, when I started talking to Lydia and, uh, and then uh, Alejandro was dating Nicole, Nicole from Family Chantel, he told me they're on the show and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then he looked familiar to me because at, I work night shifts all the time and my patients would have the TLC network on. So it looked familiar. I knew a little about it. But when I started talking to Lydia and, she, you know, I know a little bit of Espanol. So I would have like my co-workers that were bilingual. You have like poco Espanol. Just, uh... Yeah, que, que lastima, po <laughs> que lastima poquito español. But I know enough to say, mi grande, musculoso, rico, suave, loco. <laughs> all, all, the, all, the, all the sizzle words you know. 
Exactly. Exactamente. There exactly. you go. So, um, so yeah, the last 10 years dated overseas a lot. And then, and then I fell into this by accident with Lydia and then, but people warned me, like my coworkers, like, bro, you, you're talking to Lydia from the family Chateau. I was like, yeah, what does that mean? The crazy. So you didn't know that, that they were part of the show when you. Well, they, they started telling me, people start saying, you know, they're crazy. They're crazy. And they started YouTubing videos with the chicken wings and things like uh, that. Did you get and then, chicken wings, by the way? I don't care. No, I'll no, eat. no, not chicken wings, chicken feet. I'm sorry. Was no, I'm not eating chicken feet. No, 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 no. Did she, she never serve them to you? No, no, she didn't serve me chicken feet. So, so that was it. So then we start talking and I kind of dismissed it because I wanted to get to know her and now got go by hearsay because the same thing now, where I'm at now, trying to date now based on the perception of how people see me, it's like night and day. Okay, so you meet Lydia uh, or the you know the group Nicole and them in Brooklyn around around COVID, and yeah. then they kind of so they put it out there for you to join the show and you do with yeah. Lydia. Yeah. See, I thought. I say, okay, I you know I didn't do my research. Sorry. I yeah. I thought when you were on Love and Paradise with somebody else, and then you switched to Family Chantel with Lydia. No, no. In my head. So basically, Lydia and I did Love and Paradise. Then I brought my ex Liz, and that turned into a crash and burn situation on Love and Paradise. And then I kind of reached out to to Lid uh, to Lydia again. She really didn't want to talk to me again. But the backstory after I did like the production of Love and Paradise was like December of 2022. I, I, right after we did it, you know, Liz and I kind of had a falling out on the show, kind of a meltdown. But then she reached out to me and said, Scott, spend Christmas with me in Ecuador. We got engaged in Ecuador. We got and engaged. Me or Liz? Well, me and Liz, yes. We got engaged, Liz, okay. gave her a ring. We were together until March. And then in March, she decided, Scott, now I was having all these financial problems and all this stuff going on. She says, send me seven, eight grand for a ticket and a bus ride from Colombia to Mexico. Cause she, this is how crazy I was and how much I love this girl. She wanted to cross the border illegally with a coyote. Oh. With a not a, people understand that, not the animal. Well, a coyote is somebody that, that helps you cross the border illegally. That's right. right. That, yeah. So they wanted five grand to get her across the border in this little town. And I was going to meet her on the Mex uh, in Texas with roses waiting on the other side of the Like on the other side of the fence. Yeah. So, and then <laughs> I send her the money uh, through Western Union like two two times. And that's another thing. I send her so much money sometimes. I mean, you think I'd. Uh, but, you know, people will say, Scott, you should know better. You know, I feel like I'm the type of guy that gives great advice. I just why did she want to go that route? Why Why did she need to? Why did she need a coyote to uh, sneak? Well, away? because of the process, because like, things were getting bad in Colombia. And she just said the borders are kind of open, but I feel more comfortable coming through with a coyote. And then I sent her the money. Anyway, last minute, she decides, reneges and says, I'm not going to come across. So I said, well, send me the money back through Western Union. It's not like I just wrote checks. We were, had this established relationship for a long time. We got back together. And here's the thing. When you're in love with somebody, common sense goes out the window. You start justifying everything to yourself. And so I sent her the money. But that, to me, when she didn't send the money back, I was like, well, screw up. I won't say the word. But I was like, F off. That's it. That what you did was criminal. You took my money. And the money was supposed to be for this. And she knows my financial hardship because I had a stroke uh, the prior year. I had ischemic stroke. Maybe the, my blood pressure. It could have been a lot of reasons. But long story short, she didn't come. So then at that point, they reach out to me to do the family Chantel. So I, I, I said, okay, so I'll do the family Chantel. And then I started talking to Lydia again. Lydia, sorry, are you okay, so in, my, in, in the time frame, you, you, you were on Love and Paradise season three with Lydia. And then Liz was also shown yes. on the show. Yes. Uh, and how did and that then, play out with Liz and Lydia on the show together? Like, were they like, did they meet no, each other? No, they never saw each other. Never. Okay. No, because, because Lydia and I, when we did Love and Paradise, Lydia decided to go back to her house left the hotel and then i brought liz to the same hotel <laughs> I, brought liz to the same, I mean i had already everything booked in and everything so i was like all right so i brought liz 
then Liz and I had a fight and it was probably, it was a lot. I don't want to get into the too much the, to the show because you know, my NDA, but let's just say that things, we had a falling out and then she went back to Ecuador, not to Colombia. This time she went back to Ecuador to be the sister. Then I tried to do damage control with Lydia again, just to say, Hey, let's be friends. I felt bad about everything. Uh, then after that, I, Liz reached out to me at the end of the month at Christmas and spent Christmas with me. So I spent like a week with her there, got engaged. And then in March, she said, March of last year said, Hey, I'm going to come across the border. That didn't happen. And then Liz and I were officially done. That's the last time I talked to her. Then uh, a few weeks later, Lydia reached out to me and then, the, and then they said, you want to do the family Chattel? I said, okay, why not? So then I did the family Chattel in April of last year and then it aired in uh, November. And um, how old is Lydia? I don't know. She lies. She told me, uh, she told me she was like, my age but then once the show aired i saw 56 i was like she never told me that you know oh she looks a lot older to me i it's like I, I i i just can't see the two of you together in my in my head like yeah you know, I, can, I can watch the episodes but i, I just can't see yeah well <laughs> and then when i when i did love in paradise the family should tell us probably about 30 pounds heavier um because i had a stroke july 19th of 2022 i did love in paradise december of 2022 i well, wasn't what was it like with yeah. Chantel's family did you meet Chantel and everybody like in winter no i no i've never met their son's family I only i only went to the dominican republic twice huh so you never you only met lydia lydia nicole and pedro okay um, and they kept, they kept the rest of them away. Yeah, what well, love good. in paradise, we felt we were in Santa Domingo and then Port Plata. And then when I came back to do the family Chantel, I was in Santa Domingo again. How much time would you say you spent there over there in Santa Domingo with Lydia? Um, uh, I would say a few weeks. Uh, and while me, you were there, you were staying at her house or at a hotel? No, or? no, no. It was like the hotel, but I can't get into too much of like the production okay of it because you know how that works it's yeah, like no I, yeah. I i get it um all right so uh did you really uh feel something for lydia like did you, uh, like, would I you thought it, your bell you know i've always in the past i was very uh superficial and i always um gravitated towards younger latinos and then um but she was very nice to me and uh in text messages and I, it was probably the hardest time in my life was uh my stroke and then i was being deployed all up until my stroke um she was kind of like my rock she was a big supporter like she texts you know she text and translate to english and we do back and forth and you know it was very heartfelt and i felt like she had a good heart and you start to see sometimes that you um really like somebody for who they are and 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 i wanted to give her that benefit of the doubt the misconception that people have when they think the 90 day franchise you're already in love and you're going there to marry somebody when love in paradise was strictly it's to me it was like a like a glorified bumble or a tinder date with cameras rolling like this is uh, first... I, I see it as bachelor in paradise but that's but and again i but i've never watched one yeah yeah so it was kind of like you know meeting for the first time with cameras rolling and it just it was like baptism under fire like if everything can go wrong it pretty much did <laughs> that's a lot man uh i mean uh and you know, I've been uh, looking at some of the articles you like that I that I pulled up your name because you know I was trying to look a little. Lydia's said not some nice nice things about you. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't really care. I mean, it, that that really doesn't bother me because I can think I I think the the the, the articles that write about me are ten times worse than what Lydia has to say about me. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I like I would feel like embarrassed if like I read one article today, like Lydia's like, that's the worst sex I ever had. And I'm like, ooh, coming from Lydia, that can't be good, bro. Well, <laughs> like, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm just trying to like, you know, I'm like, ooh. Well, listen, listen, I, listen, here's the thing with Lydia. Like, uh, I, I, I probably, um, uh, I would say, the last time I had sex with her was purely vengeance sex out of spite because when I got in a fight with her son and he pissed me off, I already made up my mind that this family was crazy 
And I just hit it and quit. Well, they, are, they are crazy. I'll give I you that. In and out in like two minutes, just purely out of spite. How was your like? So I, I did hear like you and uh, and Pedro got into some type of like kerfuffle. Like what what happened there? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, here's the thing, man. Like, like first of all, you you put the three of them together is the most toxic environment. You, I you, agree. Yeah, you put all three of them together, it's a toxic environment. You all three of them because none of them. Uh, none of them can ever be in consensus. And if uh, it's always like one or two are, are, are going to like you, it's just like, I, and I felt like I was always guilty until proven innocent. And then, you know, he made up his mind with when, when, what, what happened, what happened on love in paradise. When I finally met him on the family should tell when the cameras are off the first time I met him, I, I touched him on the shoulders. Like, Hey, Pedro, it's nice to meet you. And he says, don't effing touch me. Oh, that's and, nice. And this I is do. like, you know, when him and Chantel, this, this is before him and Chantel's like very public breakup, right? Or no? Like, was, uh, was he still happily married to Chantel at this point? I think they were like going through, I don't know the exact timeline of their situation. I really didn't focus on their situation. I could tell you that they were going through the conversations with Lydia that they were going through that process. Or, I, I By the way, know. Scott, you're getting some good compliments in the chat. I know you can't see it. And, yeah. um, you know, some comments that aren't good, but I, uh, you know, there are, <laughs> there are people like, like, like the hater, listen, I, I, there's nothing that it, they got to come up with something more original. I get called a Whoville character. I'm called a lion. I'm called a cat. I'm called cringy. I'm called thirsty. I'm clinging on to five more minutes of fame, but yet, thank you, everybody. You make me relevant. And okay. I the chat is, they want you to elaborate more on you uh having sex with lydia uh for spite pretty much oh right? well once i had the fight with pedro that like i was so pissed off and let me tell you something about that guy him and i got together we were supposed to go to a gym like a traditional gym to exercise right like a gym i get blindsided i show up this place and it's got it's got a boxing gym it's got this and that's catered towards working out and he was there 20 minutes before I got there, breaking a sweat, breaking a sweat, getting every advantage possible to whoop a 52-year-old man. Well, that was his plan? Like, you guys going to spar and, like, you know, well, that was Well, no, it? we were supposed to work out. And I get blindsided. Like, and he's if like, you beat Pedro, like, you won, like, his he, mother's he won, honor. Like, he won, that that put gloves on where he could try to beat my ass with gloves on and get away with it. And, and, and first of all, I saw the writing on the wall and I didn't trust him. So I'm not going to get to a point where I put on gloves. I'm like, let's, let's, let's make it happen. That's the Brooklyn in me. Let me catch him off guard. I'll go on the attack right away. And people don't understand this because they see in an edited version, he was trying to get a single leg on me. If anyone knows MMA, he was trying to get a single leg on me and take me down. When they edit stuff, you only see part of it, but they was getting a single leg and I was underhooking this way. So my son, my father was a Golden Gloves boxing champion. I, I, I used to, I box a little bit, not to that level, uh, to like my dad. But then I was, I was a brawler. I was a, like in my neighborhood, I was one of the only white kids. I was getting my ass kicked all the time in Brooklyn until I learned how to fight. And I got into a little MMA, like jujitsu a little bit. And, I, and then when my son was wrestling high school and then wrestled collegially, he's the same age as Pedro, only one month apart. So when my son was wrestling in college, I mean, he's working three moves on me at one time and my ex-wife would be laughing as he's kicking my ass all the time. She's like, I never saw you got your ass kicked, Scott. And he choked me out with my own arm. So when, what Pedro was doing was like slow motion. I know everything he was trying to do. People don't get that. They think we're hugging, but there was, is more grappling and, and me and, and, but I, I had him. When he came around, they started breaking it up. And I had him at that point because I was going to do like a rear naked choke on his ass. And uh, I, I'm, you won? Did you? Did, this is all on TV. And he's not. He's not even. Listen, I might be fifty-two. And I'm not bragging. I don't want to fight anymore. But I would have. I would have ripped him apart. I would just decimated. I would have destroyed him if they didn't have the bodyguards there. I would have killed them. I would have ripped them apart. All right. So, uh, so that's Love in Paradise. That, that, that's your first season of Love in Paradise, right? Like the first show you were on. Yeah, love, well, no, the fight I had with uh, Pedro that was on the Family Chateau. That was on that was on Love in Paradise. Love in Paradise was like uh, 
me getting to know Lydia, meeting Nicole, my ex. What, Lydia, oh, by the way, what did they get Nicole? Oh, she's she's a big pain in the ass too. I mean, she's she runs her mouth nonstop. She's diarrhea of the mouth. I can't stand her. She's asking me how many women I had sex with in front of her mother. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if I brought Lydia to the United States and I brought her in front of my sons, and they said, and my my kids said, "Hey, Lydia, uh, how many penises have you had between your legs?" Oh, oh my. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I It'd be the same that. thing. Uh, <laughs> God. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, they'll the, be talking about this tomorrow. Uh, Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, but the thing with Lydia, I could care less. I put no effort into it. After the fight with Pedro, I like I said on the show, I said, listen, I'm going to have sex with your mom. We're going to make some little Pedro tonight. And I'm purely doing that as spite. It was spiteful sex. It lasted about two minutes, and I was done. Wait, you said that on the show? Yeah. <laughs> I said it's purely out of vengeance, purely vengeance, purely spite. And then all now I got so many haters. Everyone's like, "Wow, Ooh, oh, your character!" Yeah. Ooh. But God, now man, he's that ballistic. <laughs> Just having sex with somebody purely out of spite—that's a whole new level of that's 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 ballistic, you know. Well, I mean, like people have done that in the past, but like probably not people on like you know the, a, a big giant uh, cable TV show, uh, but. Ooh, <laughs> glory. Okay, so, all right, so, uh, all right, so, ha all right, how does your season of Love in Paradise end so I can segue to, like, the family of Chantal? What, 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 like, what's, like, the ending scenario? The end that? was me apologizing to Lydia and saying, hopefully we can be friends, and that was and pretty- And at this point, like, you're kind of back with Liz? N not when 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 Love in Paradise aired. Uh, let's see, when. Okay, so yeah, so when Love in Paradise uh, aired, that was, I mean, not when it aired. I'm sorry, when the production of it was done, I said to Lydia, "Let's be friends." And then about a week later, uh, that was like the end of November, December, the first week of uh, December, and then Liz and I start talking the second week of December, and she asked me to spend Christmas with her sister and her kids in Ecuador. Okay. Okay. So then what, and, and this stuff, the, the stuff with Pedro happened while you were on. So what got you on the family Chantel then? All right. So that well, happened. Because, well, because I, I let, per, I let them all know that I wasn't with Liz anymore. That you know, when Liz didn't come across the border with the coyote and then I told, I reached out to Lydia. I said, Lydia, just let you know that Liz and I are done, done. I just want to see you're doing okay. Once again, my apologies. Um, you know, I just was like, I, I, I think I've talked to her once or twice and, and she, we were cordial with each other. And then, and then once I was done with Liz completely and I saw that she was taking advantage of me for money with the whole coyote thing in March, that's when I was talking more to Lydia and she goes, are you done? I said, yeah, I'm done, done. And I feel like I didn't give her a fair opportunity because my mind was clouded. Do you feel like Lydia had like true feelings for you? Or yes. You so I, think she, I think she loved me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then you get back on TLC with the family, Chantel. And then ha how many, ep were you on the, the full season? I was on four episodes, but they only paid me for three. Because they said this is how this is sharp entertainment because it said well the footage from family chantel was footage from love and paradise so we don't have to pay you again for it <laughs> okay so like so it was on three three uh four of the five episodes and like the beginning me. episodes of the season or like the tail end? It was only it was a short season. It was only five episodes. And I think they 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 put me in the trailer in the first one. Oh, watch. the whole season? Like, you know, I, I watched the family Chantel in the first season and like I watched like the first three episodes. And I, you know, I always I, I'm always team Chantel. I like Chantel, uh, but I couldn't I couldn't get past, I couldn't watch it. Just like I can't watch Darcy and Stacy. Like I and just like I don't watch Love uh, Caribbean style or whatever the hell your show Love Power in the Paradise. I don't know. Uh, so, but it, uh, so the, the, the fifth season was really just only five episodes and you were in all of them. 
I was in four. I think four of the yeah four of the five episodes. Huh. And then you were you, was there? I'm assuming there was a tell all. Were you at the re? No, they didn't do a tell all. They no tell all. There's no tell alls for Love and Paradise because it's like a lower budget show. And then there was supposed to be a tell all for the Family Chantel. And then it got nixed. They said we're not going to do it. And they didn't give me a reason why. I don't know if it's between, you know, all the drama between uh, Chantel and Pedro or whatever. I, they just said that they 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 said we're not going to do it. So I was like, okay, and that was it. So I never did a tell all. Thank you, Eb. <laughs> Sorry, we can get the comments. Uh, well, everyone always says I'm biased. Oh, you're biased. So look, like, I'm, I'm I'm doing this with you know I don't know anything really about you and. Um, I, I, but I know you have um, a reputation. Just, I know I have a reputation too. So they yeah. want, they just want you to hate me. That's what it is. I, I I don't need to read the messages to know that I can feel the hate. I can feel the hate, hatred. It's okay. When do you, like, okay. So when did like you start feeling the hatred? Right off the bat, because I feel like the way I was portrayed on Love and Paradise and love bomb and Liz and this and that and make me thirsty and I don't know, kind of cringy when that's not who I mean, listen, this is the thing. I'm not going to contradict production, but here's an example. If, if you have cameras following you for 12 hours and say, I pick my nose at six in the morning when I wake up, <laughs> and I pick my nose at four o'clock in the afternoon, they can zero in on that and make that content for like two minutes of an episode where it looks like I'm a habitual nose picker. Like, oh my God, Scott picks his nose all the time. So, like you know, Seinfeld. what's that? Like in Seinfeld. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, 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 they can do whatever they want. Where I feel like I, I was on these two shows, a total of 10 episodes of Love and Paradise, three episodes of Family Chattel or four, whatever you want to say, that, um, you know, it doesn't establish your character. It doesn't establish the many layers. Like if I was doing um, these puff piece pillow talk and all these other stupid shows that kind of establish your character and people kind of can fall in love with you because I see your depth like an onion, you know, one layer at a time, you know, I don't think I ever got that opportunity. So I've well, received... I, I can look at you and like, you know, you seem like very like, you know, in shape, you know, broad, uh, like, you know, and, I I can't see you at Lydia. Like I I just can't see it. Like I, I see Lydia like you know serving school lunches like frail and uh, you know and like I I just can't see the two of you together. So, Poppy, lady, like, you're scaring me. If like it were me, like I would be like, okay, he's full of shit because I can't like you know you know I'm a New Yorker. Like I would be like, oh, this guy is just doing it for like the TV, like you know because about the shows and listen in high in hindsight I, knowing everything i know now and how i was destroyed and decimated on social media where it affects my livelihood as a respiratory therapist i never i never freaking would have done this i'm not making any money i i my social media is building i'm building a good following and stuff but it's not paying my bills yet you know i like i'm at in hindsight, I wish I didn't do it. Uh, but you know what? I felt like after my stroke happened, I was like, you know, maybe this is uh, another oh, new doors opening. Maybe there's, you know, there's something's going to become this. I don't know. But I, I never went to a, a tryout or audition. TLC reached out to me and asked me to do it. Yeah, no, I get that. I get it. Um, so well, Lydia I was talking to Lydia for almost a year through text messages and stuff. And she's very supportive and nice to me the whole time, you know, like, and I felt like it, and I wasn't with anybody at the time. So it felt like, I was like, Hey, um, I, I said, when I do this next contract, I'd like to meet you. And then she's like, cool. And then we planned one, one week I was going to come. And then for whatever reason, I don't remember what happened. I said, all right, I'll come two weeks later. And then all of a sudden I got a phone call from TLC. Like, do you mind if we follow you with cameras? And I said, okay, you know, why not? All right. So, like, I'm a, okay, so a lot. We started, I, what, I'm what a, kind of hate were you getting? Like, once, like, you know, they were showing love and, and love in paradise. Like, well, like well, you know, because, like, I, what I've seen, like, you know, and, like, you know, you, you showed me a bunch of articles last night. And I Googled you. And, like, you know, I've been try doing my, trying to do my research. I, you know, I'm in, I've been trying to go into this uh, interview as unbiased as possible. I kind of really didn't want to know anything. 
because, you know, I never watched you on TV and I kind of just wanted to fill you out. Um, and I know that uh, a lot of the articles are saying that you'll do anything to be relevant and, you know, make a scene so people don't forget about you. Like, what do you say about that? Well, they're all crap bloggers. <laughs> they're crap. I wipe my ass with with every article they write about me because they the slander. Not one of those articles, 11 pages on Google of crap about me. And guess what? Let me let's do that. Let's do let's do my timeline. I'm 52 years old. Up until I was 52, I was an accomplished high school and competitive soccer coach. There was and how no long did you do like the high school coaching for? Years uh, from 2011 to 2015. I mean, I coached high school competitive and recreational for well, years. Well, I was also in academia. That's why I asked. Uh, okay. All right. So I, I uh, like for uh, for my national certifications. I have my national D license. My uh. I, for U8 to U19 competitive soccer. Um, and then I, I coach recreational, recreational and competitive. And then I also coach high school from 2011 to 2015, came back in 2019, and then COVID happened in 2020. And I stopped coaching. I was going to keep coaching, but I stopped. Um, so, you know, I've done that. And then and then there was, if you look on my Instagram, uh, like I started posting some stuff. I was, uh, there was a, a story done by the Tampa Bay, Bay News 9, where I saved this baby that was cardiac arrest on the causeway. Um, I did uh, a few other things. Like, it was all positive. The first article these crap bloggers wrote was, who is Scott Warren on April 17th of the premiere of Love in Paradise? After that, 11 pages on Google of crap, of <laughs> Uh, slander and defamation of character and destroying me and in a way that has affected my livelihood where I have to justify myself for this $13,000 I was paid to do these crap TV shows. And now I have to justify myself when I had a great livelihood. Like I was making during COVID, I was making three, 400 grand a year. The money was crazy. But now, you know, I can still pull in a hundred thousand a year as a respiratory therapist. That's my livelihood. Has this affected your career as a respiratory See, therapist? I lost two jobs, not because of just the perception. It's those haters, trollers calling in the hospitals up and harassing them. Oh, don't have them work there. Uh, I, I would be afraid to have him as my therapist. He's on hinge. He's this. He's that. They've created. They, they I mean, made... to the people in the chat, like I kind, I, I, I kind of have to sympathize with them a little bit because, like, the same should happen to me. Um, so, like, you know, I, 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 I feel for him because I've had that happen to me. So. Uh... No, I have to own some things. I had a few because when you do reality TV. You don't have a PR person. I didn't have any representation. So uh, that's the Brooklyn in me. So I fight back. I'm going on social media saying these horrible things about me. So I, I, I sometimes would freak out and start yelling and screaming. And then they're like, oh, he's on anabolic steroids. First of all, I'm not on anabolic steroids. I had a stroke July 19th of 2022. I can't have anything to raise my blood pressure. The only time my blood pressure gets high is because these, these trollers and haters that used to impact me, but now I've learned a way to deal with it more, you know, but, but anyway, 11 pages on Google, a slander, defamation of character, calling me everything in the book, you know, and, and, and you have nobody to defend you. You know, it's not like I have an attorney in my back pocket that I can call and write a letter of cease and desist, you know? Do you feel like anything you've done warranted? And like again, like you know, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, well, you, what, what would you feel like that you've done that was like too much? Like Scott, like that was the limit. You, I, I, you know, I've said some stuff over the court, and I've been at this for ten years, and I know me, I've said some stuff. I'm like, here, God, this, why did you say that? Let me say this: There's been twice in the last year I thought about hurting myself. That's how bad it got. Like I wanted to hurt myself. Like I. I, I'm the, always the strongest individual, but I've never encountered this much hate. And I'm not an ass kisser. I'm not going to conform to what they want and just go away. I'm going to keep putting out my content, whether they like it or not. It's, the, you know, what I've learned, they're the sad, pathetic ones, like these uh, uh, mad, moving mad and reality trash. and shit. Don't name them, please. Because then you'll, you'll send them right to them. So don't even name them. No. Oh, I know. I'm just saying, though. But they're the ones that are accountable for 
for uh, sending this hate out there. They're promoting it. And that's what I have a problem with. They encourage it. No, I, well, you know, nah, um, what you just said, like, you know, you, you just, you thought about hurting yourself. I mean, I've been, on that oh yeah, I've not that recently. Too, so I, yeah, that's, that's how bad you're tested and that's how bad it got. But you know, I mean, it's because this is all brand new. You go from a conventional life to an unconventional life. Like, this is all like, wow, you know, social media be, before it used to be a very pleasant place for me because the only people that were on my Facebook or Instagram were people that I physically knew. That's it. So they're not going to come out and say horrible things to you. Maybe something sarcastic. That would be it. And then you do this and then you're like blowing up on social media and you get all those people following you, just following you to heckle you to attack you, to slander you, to make, and then you get, I've seen everything. I've had fake accounts on Reddit, creating fake accounts, acting as if passing themselves off as my kids. Uh, nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing. Got a question I have um, from the chat is that um, they had read that your children are upset with you because no. of social media. And no, not at only fans. Is there, is there any truth to that? Oh, no, not, not at all. And I, listen, I already, I already just, listen, I, my relationship, I keep, I keep my kids and my mother, I keep all my, my family, I keep that out. That's taboo. I don't, I don't tap into that. I can say I have a great relationship with my kids and I love my three kids and I love my nine grandkids and there's no truth. Nine the, grandkids. Wow. The wow. only, the only, the only fans thing I was did, I put up the page, the homepage and I said, I'm entertaining only fans. And, you know, it's no different than the, 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 the clickbait that they do. Yeah, some of the stuff I, I stir the pot with. I'm like, okay. And sure enough, everything I do, they write a story about. So I do the so whole did you thing. Have, did you ever post anything on OnlyFans? Or no, it was like a I had my computer laptop, and I, I, I did the home screen of uh, OnlyFans. And I said, I'm thinking about doing OnlyFans. And then sure enough, they write about it. So you you never made it, so other than that like you never went forward with that. No, no, no. I but I understand there's different levels of OnlyFans. It doesn't have to be pornographic. I, I I thought there's like different levels of it. You could do like you know posting pictures and, and your shorts and things like that. I thought about something like that if it was tasteful, but nothing that would affect my livelihood working in the hospital or or uh, potential opportunities for other TV networks other than TLC. I, I think that if you had to move forward only fans they would probably ruin you in every way. Uh, you know, yeah. No, there's, there's no content I posted. I just entertained it. I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing it. And a lot of times I test the waters. I'll, I'll, I'll say something and then they write about it. I'm just like, are they, you know, I know I'm under the microscope. If I do anything like, a, here's an example. There's one post where I went to the my buddy's junkyard and I'm beating the hell out of this car, breaking windows in a junkyard, right? And they all say, Scott's crazy. He's a cement. Well, it's very in vogue in Florida and other places that they have these insanity rooms that you can go in there and break stuff with a sledgehammer. So, but when I do it, I put the little spin on it. On the windows, I put sharp entertainment, moving mad, TLC, and I'm just busting stuff up. Because I don't have a great, I have no love for the network or the uh, sharp entertainment. I could care less about them. I'm gonna, you're going to see me on more TV. It's going to be on another network. I can promise you that. Okay, well, um, that's my another question about you being back on TV. Um, so I guess that's answered. <laughs> my, my contract with TLC will be up the, the I think it was a nine months, eight months after the last episode, which put me at the end of June. My hands are washed at TLC, or or Sharp Entertainment. So you would say your experience on the show, like, did did you feel like that, like you were edited poorly, like like. Because you're not happy with how you were portrayed. I, so. I, I, I would just say that I, I was, let's just say, I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to talk about editing or production. I'll just say that I didn't have enough time on television to show more about me. You know, I'm not perfect. I, I, I own a lot of mistakes. But I'll just say that I wasn't happy. I don't think I had enough opportunity to, to show my diversity, my humor, my, you know, uh, my vulnerability, there's other things to me that I wish that people would get to see because I feel like uh, the people that are close to me or the, my followers that start following me on Instagram now that love me, they say, Scott, I, it's a consensus. You're misunderstood. That's what they tell me. 
Do you feel like you're a little guilty of them not understanding you fully? Like, and I, I don't see that in a mean way. I'm just like, you know, because uh, like Scott, like there's a lot of people like that don't like you. And I get what it's like to not be liked. Trust me, I know. But I don't uh, really care because I, I feel like now my approach is different with like, you know, Amanda and I have gotten to be really good friends. Amanda from 90 Day. Well, we'll get to Amanda in a second. Yeah, yeah. But just saying like she's really, uh, we've come really, really close in the way my approach to social media is is the same but the my my psychological approach to it is a lot different i believe that you you you're really popular when you're truly hated i mean i feel like i'm if they keep writing I mean, there is there is truth to that because you yeah. know the more hated you are the, the more people like i mean they keep writing about about me. They keep ask, ask howard stern how he got how he got famous well, let me say this. How can I be so thirsty if they keep writing about me three times a week? Well, you see it. Look at it. Look how many times they write about me. Uh, I mean, I, I I think in the last three, four weeks, uh, whether they say it's with a gender or not, I was like, I'm just living my life and I put out my content the way I want to put it. I never told anyone to steal my content and write about me. I never do that. I put what I want out there and it's up to them with what they want to do with that information. Okay. So, all right. Um, there's a lot and like um all right so i'm just kind of like maybe jumping around a little bit was it like um and again i say this with no judgment because it happened to me but there was there was a a part of your life but like you were kind of like homeless right no i was never homeless i had um eight uh was it april i was going through a bankruptcy i started that process and um you know a lot of that was i do with many things like i I, after my stroke, I did the shows and, you know, you don't get paid till the shows come out and it's very, it's peanuts where you get paid. Um, but I was still recovering and, you know, people don't understand that. They're like, oh, you had a stroke, like you're in the gym. That has nothing to do with, um, you know, your cognitive and your quick thinking skills, critical thinking. I, I'm a true patient advocate, so I didn't want to dive back into something until I was ready. Um, and then by the time I was ready, it's the perception that affected me, like my livelihood. But, you know, um, what I'm trying to say is that, um, I'm sorry, I lost, I lost my train of thought. What well, was I, was like, I was asking me like, you know, um, like, you know, cause were you ever like not without a home? Like, cause it, Oh know? yeah. No, I was, I owned my house and they, they, they pulled up, you know, Starcasm pulled up my bankruptcy and, 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 you know, I did a chapter seven bankruptcy last year. I maxed out my credit cards. A lot of that was attributed to you know, um, overspending Liz manipulated me for money many times. Um, I was helping out my kids with money. My, I was helping out a lot of people. I was helping out my mom. And, you know, I would say that, you know, I've talked about, Oh, this is fourth bankruptcy. And they said, why'd you fall bankruptcy four times? I said, because I can. I mean, you sure can. I mean, you can. I, can. Yeah. I don't give a crap. Banks do it every day. Trump's done it. Everyone's done it. I don't care. The difference is I own my mistakes. Did I do it because I'm bad with money? Yes, I'm absolutely bad with money because most of the time I give money to people I love. But you were never like, you know, living in your car or... No, no, no. What happened was that video that was posted was I my cards were all maxed out and they got declined and I had this meltdown with all the hate I was getting in like May or I think it was June. And I had this video where I'm crying and everything because that was like my first breakdown because all of it was brand new. I'm getting all this hate from Love and Paradise. And then I wasn't getting, I, they just started paying me for the show, but I wasn't, you know, it was, it was like a meltdown. So I was, I was slept in my car when I was using the, the showers at Planet Fitness for like two to three days till I got my enough money to get back to Florida because I owned a house in Florida. But I was behind on all my bills and I knew inevitably. But you had the house the whole time. You just couldn't get to Florida? Yeah, I couldn't get back to Florida. And then I was behind on all my bills. Everything was going to hell. Like I had, ele I had electric car, I had another vehicle. I was slowly losing everything because I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to work at that time. Like I was still having a lot of anxiety. I was dealing with a lot of things after my stroke. And then they said, come out and say, I didn't have a stroke. Like no matter what I do, no matter what I say, they create. And there's a problem with people. People are stupid. Everything they read, they believe. Okay. Yeah, that's true. And there's slander. There's defamation of character because Reddit puts it out or some crap blogger writes about it doesn't mean it's true okay um and you know that you know that oh well, i know i know oh well. they okay you know that that that's what they do they create 
narratives. narratives. They, 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 they create, people listen, they create false narratives to get, it's called clickbait. They want you to click on their story. They could say eight reasons why Scott's a monster with a question mark. It's a question. It's not, it's not a statement. It's not a, hey, he's a monster. No, it's, it's implied. How do they like what? What do they say that implies that you're a monster? Or like, I don't know. When they, when they say you're a monster, I mean, what look are they referring look, to? Look on. I don't know. Uh, there's so many articles I can't keep up with. The keyword thirsty, key, keyword cringy, keyword monster. Uh, I mean, it, it, I can't even keep up with it because to me it's like the multiverse of DC or Marvel. When I read these articles. It's another version of me that they've created. I'm like, wow, that's who I am. No, I get that, and I get, I get the multiverse. Listen, like I, I I watch all that too. I understand what you're saying. Um, and then, but here's the thing. Here's the thing I gotta say. When you hear, you know, have I been guilty of? There's been times I've been vulnerable. There, I had this drunk uh, meltdown on live about. I just had a lot of things happen to me at one time. And, you know, I don't get drunk. I don't drink. Then they call you an alcoholic. I don't drink. I've always been in fitness. I've always taken care of myself. Like, I've probably been drunk like 10 times in my whole life. And I got this fireball bottle, and they, uh, it was just a nightmare. But they, I do this live, and, you know, that was my, my mistake. I did that, and I'm rambling on about stuff. You know, because I can't hold my liquor, and I, I don't drink. So I do this live, and then they write about it. And then, but then right after that, he's like, oh, he's an alcoholic. He's this, he's that, the other. It's like, whatever you do, it's not just a little bit. It gets sensationalized by a thousand, you know? Okay. Is there like, you know, I just, I kind of want to know why they're calling you a monster. Like, what, give me an example of them calling no, you a monster. No, they don't, the, the article. I mean, I, I'm just using an example. There's 11 pages on Google. I can't recite six months ago an article about, because I don't give it any validity. Because you went, you went, you did an IG live, and you were, you were, you, were, you, you, you tossed a couple back, and like you know, you kind of said things you probably shouldn't have. I mean, I've been there. No, 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 no. no this article that they wrote, Eight Reasons Why It's a Monster, was I was giving you a back that was one of the eleven pages of Google. I don't remember when they wrote it, and I, I can't tell you why because there's no validity to it. I don't give it any thought anymore. They write a lot of things about me that doesn't mean that it's true, and that I'm going to entertain it anymore. You know what I mean? I just like I write it off. You know, I, it's like, it's funny. This is funny too. You go to these Facebook groups that will try to add you like, Oh, join this 90 day Facebook page. And I joined one or two of them. And then they're talking crap about me the whole time. And then I, I, I leave the group. Like, why do you leave them? Like, I don't need to be, I don't need to read comments of all these negative things about me. These people don't even know me. It's like, what's the saying? Uh, yeah, but you're a public figure now and they're going to talk sh shit. Yeah, about but, but like I said, it's not like I signed up and said, Hey, this is what I want to do. Like, I fell into it by accident. I didn't know the, the what would happen after that. And now I, I feel like all I do is damage control. But now I'm past damage control. I'm just living my life. I'm living. I'm doing me. I'm working on uh, other things. And um, I'm going to make the best of a bad situation. I mean, this show, and I like I... It's, I can't believe you actually never saw it before. Like, you know, the whole, like when you were in New York and the COVID and whatever, like it, this show is like the biggest show. Yeah, on but yeah. You'll see. And uh, it's. it's uh, I'm saving lives working 12 hour shifts every night. I'm not sitting there entertaining reality. But that's not important to. You don't, you don't see it on TV. Like, all you see is you and Lydia or Liz or whomever. And, yeah. you know, you, they don't see that. So, you know, uh, and this show is very, you know, it's got a very diverse audience, I'll say. Yeah. And, uh, the good people that watch it are great. That's why, you know, I've been at this, I've been covering a show for 10 years. Uh, yeah. I've been the longest blogger there is for 90 Day Fiance. And yeah. uh, I mean, I've had my times when I've, I, 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 you know, just recently, I, I hadn't talked about the show in like maybe six or seven months because like, you know, it's a lot. The show is a lot um well it's not so it's not the show it's this it's the stories that were the irresponsible bloggers that write these crap articles about me they're the ones that are accountable for the narrative that's created like what's like a headline that you wish you could change from like one of these I, i'm not i don't wish i can change anything because they're none of them are credible they're all crap sarcasm 
uh, whatever uh, the other ones. Um, oh God, there's like three or four. I mean, I sent you all the things on there on the Google. Yeah, I don't know if you got a computer. There's Collider. There's there's so many that um, they're just crap. They've never. How about this? Eleven pages on Google, and I've only had one person writer this freelance writer reach out to me to get my version to get my story all these articles written they never they never they never interviewed me this is their narrative this is their perception and they twist and try to destroy what are they twisting tell me what they're twisting everything they 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 call me uh uh i'm narcissistic they call me unhinged they call me um um Thirsty. Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I, I'd have to go to my computer and look at it. I, I, no, it's fine. Like I don't. Like, no, like I'm just. I just. You know. I mean, I, I could dissect every article that they did if I click on an article off the top of my head. You got to remember, I, I had a stroke, so my short term memory. Like for me, I got to reference things in the top of my head. Uh, you know, I might be quick witted to you, but I I can't pull the information isn't dumping in my head fast enough for me to pull. I'd have to. No, that's pull. fine. That's fine. Like you know, I I, I just want to give you like the outlet to. Oh, I know. It's just but but yeah. All I just say that, that it's it's eleven pages of crap, uh, and and one only one of those eleven pages actually reached out to me to get my version. Okay. All right. All right. All right, so let's kind of like move on from this subject. Um, tell me how you like, you know, and like, um, well, before we get there, um, uh, you know, I am very good friends with Tiffany. <laughs> okay. Like very, very good friends with Tiffany. Like we 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 spent a lot of time together, like not just on like, you know, uh social media, but in real life. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Tiffany? I, I, I would like your, like, uh, you know, I didn't know much about you, honestly, but I do know that, like, you know, you were, you and Tiffany kind of had, like, this, like, little, like, thing for, like, a, a hot minute. Uh, yeah. So can you, and then I have, so just tell me about that, because, you know, that, I'm, I'm curious. It was, it was really purely innocent. I was just, I mean, I, I mean, everyone knows that knows me well enough now that they know I love Latinos. I love younger Latinos. That, that that goes without question. I think Tiffany is very beautiful, inside out, inside and out. I think she's a great mom. I think she's uh, she's a hustler. She knows how to get. I think she's done so many great things with her make blind and everything like that. I've got and and you know I mean she's given me advice a few times. You know with uh, my approach to social media. Now do I listen? To that advice probably not you know I'm, but I, at the time during the summer you know i i i i i was trying to shoot my shot you know and and see what happens and 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 you know of course they start writing about it and everything like that but you know i no, i did have the best intentions and but at the same time i think at that time i was really trying to build my social media so i i knew there was some shock value if i did that yeah, it was probably a little bit of an agenda there Okay, uh, that's fair. Like you know, I, I did talk to Tiffany today because I'm like, I, hey, I'm interviewing Scott. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I, I think I, <laughs> I did call her. I'll never say anything bad about her. She's no, great... no, and, and and honestly, Tiffany had nothing really bad to say about you either. So yeah. uh, she, she, you know, I, Tiffany told me that she just, you know, like you said, she tried to steer you in like in the direction of <laughs> like you, know, you can't, you, you you can't look at every DM you're getting from uh, every. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I own that. I own that. You know, and I, I think Amanda now is uh, like, you know, I'm because Wait, not yet, not in because that's the next thing. No, um, no, no, same, but I think that when we get to it, I'm just saying like Amanda, and I, because I identify with her better because we're both hated <laughs> and we both experience the same things and we have a lot in common. So that I probably listen to her, seek her counsel more than anybody. Um, but Tiffany told me a couple of, you know, and we're all, you know, listen, I've never been on the show, but I've been at this for 10 years. So I get probably as much hate as all y'all do. Like, you yeah. know, I, like, you know, your hate subsides because you're off the season. Like mine just keeps going over and over and over again. Cause I keep talking about the show for a decade. So I, it just never ceases for me, but, yeah. um, you oh, know, you think it, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to like, you know, look at those DMS that you get, like, you know, cause they're horrible. Have you have you found a way to like mitigate like your feelings towards like the hateful comments at all? No, I don't give it. I don't. I let them come. Keep coming. Bring it. Bring it now. I don't care. I love it. I love it. It gives me an erection now. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> well, I guess it's good. Hey, let them hate. Give me more relevance because you're going to see me. I'm going to be on another network. I promise you that. And about how many people would you say you blocked? And I, I, I've blocked a lot of people. Well, at one time I had 3,000 blocked. That's a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. All right. Unblocked them. I unblocked them. I'm like, listen, Amanda, I said, she goes, I'll give him another shot. So I think I'm back up to like uh, 1,200 now. So are you, are you, do you feel like you're doing better with like the hateful comments or like the DMs? Or well, now I only block them. I, I only, before I, a lot of times, if they just were sarcastic or, or they just were just, I could see the line of questioning. If I know, I kind of have a pulse now, like who the trollers are, who's showing up just to heckle. And I, if I get after a few messages like that, uh, I just block them. I'm like, yeah, I don't need it. I, for me, it's like, I don't need that toxic environment. And I don't think my real fans like it either. So, or so no, they don't, I can promise you they don't. And like the real, listen, I've learned this the hard way. Oh, and like, I'm no angel either. Like I still once in a while have to like, you know, explode on the haters, which, you know, I, we're all human and <laughs> You know, yeah. you, you can only bottle up so much. So, uh, but, but the thing you can't win it anyway. So, I don't charge for here's, here's, and these other 90 day people, probably 80% of the 90 day cast, they can go to hell. I don't like them either. I'm going to distance myself from all this 90 day crap. Um, I can tell you that a lot of them put on this facade and they try to be what they're not. They'll charge for cameo. I don't do that. Like, for example, this is something else. There was 90 day cast members talking crap about me on Thanksgiving and Christmas when I went to New York to Which work. Which ones? I'm, I'm not saying, but let's just say this. They, 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 uh, cause I, I know what you're trying to do, but I, I don't no, feel like. I, I just want to know which one. That's uh, no, but I, I'm not going to say, but let's just say that they, they, they were sitting there saying that I didn't do all these uh, videos for people. Like I, on Thanksgiving, a week before I said, if anyone wants a personal video from me, cause it was right around the time the family Chantel was airing. I said, I'll do personal videos for anybody. I, I had the day off anyway. I was hanging out with my dog in New York and I did like 300 videos on Thanksgiving. And I think I did about 120 on Christmas day. Cause I wasn't with family. I was just me and my dog and I wasn't working those days. So I did those videos and now I'm reading on like these threads a certain 90 day people saying, Oh, he didn't do 300, he probably did about 40 or 50. So you, did, you, know, you did like 300 like videos, like for free, like not on camera. Yeah, yeah, they sent me DMs, and then even my fans are like the followers. My fans, are like, he did one for me, he did one for me, he did one for me. Like, and then, like, no matter what I do, it gets diminished and dissected and questioned. And I'm past that now. They can hate. They can think I'm full of crap on everything. I don't give a damn anymore. That's really, I, it's not being, um, I, and now they say, oh, he thinks he's so this. I don't think I'm anything. I'm just living my life. I don't care. Listen, when did your opinions, when did their opinions, the haters, when did those, when their opinions pay my freaking bills? When? If they don't pay my bills, if it, and like for another thing, when they come up on my page to give me advice, you don't know me. And you're going to tell me to do this or do that, or maybe you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. It would be like me. You don't, you barely know me. If you came, if I came to your house and you invited me as a guest and you offered me dinner and I said, you know what? I don't like your curtains. I don't like your throw rug. Yeah, I, get, I get your point. I understand it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I understand back it. in your house again. So I'm not going to have you on my page. But, that, that, but that's social media. Like, you know, that's, uh, that's how that works. Yeah. You but know? I can. I can control that uh, to some extent. I'll just, uh, I don't need them. I don't need, I know that they're showing up to heckle. I know they're showing up to do that. I don't need engagement percentages. I don't need that. I'm building, I'm up to 118,000 and I'm, I keep going. I'm going, yeah, I, I, if I gain, uh, some days I've gained, when, when they write these stories as blockers, I'll spike another thousand and block a hundred. So I'm still up nine. So I don't care. Do you kind of feel like you kind of have to be a dick sometimes to like, you know, keep people motivated? I think you might perceive me, but I'm not being that way. I'm just being very direct. And that's the Brooklyn in me. Like, I'm just. No, I, I, I get Brooklyn. I understand it. Yeah, 
uh, listen, you know, and the way I conduct myself in a professional and working as a therapist is completely different because my hands aren't up and my guard isn't up. But, you know, now when it comes to the social media, my guard is always up. Nothing, nothing surprises me, but I'm desensitized, but I'm past the point of, of letting it get to me. I just, when we're talking about it, I'm emotional about it because you're asking me. I understand. I understand. We're, we're, we're revisiting everything again, and I'm trying to give you the whole backstory. Um, but I don't care whether they hate me or don't hate me. I'm not losing sleep over it. They, they, I, I feel like my social media keeps growing. They keep writing about me. So I guess that's a good thing. I guess I still have some relevance there. What, when they say don't, I, I feel like I do. But, you know, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on the prize that I'm going to redeem myself. I'm going to do I'm going to be on, I'm going to be on another show. I know that's going to happen. Um, I'm not going to say anything more than that. I'll just say that my days on TV are not over and I'm going to make the best of it. And I, you know, if anything, I enjoy it. And I think that this is going to be the new direction of my life. I've been a respiratory therapist 28 years. I think, you know, I'm, I'm gotten to the point where I'm, I, I always said I would get out of the field when I'm not a patient advocate and I'm not passionate about it. And I think this could be something I could transition to and still have fun with it. I just have to deal, desensitize myself to the process of the haters and the trollers. Do you think that now, you know, you're, you're looking, you're, you're moving forward, going to other shows now. Do you think that at least this kind of like desensitized you and like maybe like this, this trained you to maybe deal with things better like on yeah, the next definitely. show that you definitely. might be on? I think the time that I've spent with Amanda has helped me greatly. Like, I wish I would right, do Let's this. get to Amanda. How did, how, how did that all work out? Okay, so. Well, that's um, another, here that they say, it's another publicity stunt. Everything I do is a publicity stunt. Everything I do, everything. Okay, so how, how did you and Amanda connect? You know, I, you know, and like, I was pretty critical of Amanda. Uh, <laughs> like, I. Um, hey, hey, listen, I, I'll come don't be talking crap about Amanda. Well, I I was, you know, we were doing our recap, and I, I can't lie to you and say you tell you that I wasn't because I I was, you know, I, I felt a certain way about her, but um, that's not neither here nor there for this interview. But I I, I did not, you know, I I don't know, like I've been around and no, I, I just so well, what? Let, how did let, you how did you and Amanda get connected? Um, I would say um. I started watching after the shows, my show was, uh, I think, I don't remember her show was before or after. I don't remember like the timeline. I can't remember details. On, I, I, I've seen a few of her episodes and, um, and then I, I see the way she was. And then I really kind of kept, like, I, I think we added each other on Instagram at some point. And I would say within the last year, um, she started liking a few things. I started liking a few things, but with just, just liking very innocent. And then uh, when I think the family Chattel aired is when I started getting a lot of hate and I've been, I, uh, you know, I would kind of blow up sometimes and, and like, she would send me DMS and say, Hey, are you okay? Like just checking on me. Like Riley, Riley, uh, Riley's a great guy. I didn't like Riley in the beginning, but I, I love Riley now. And, th and that's something you never judge a book by the cover. And I think people that know me close, and that's the biggest thing Amanda said, not to jump ahead, but Amanda's like, Scott, you're so interested. You're such a sweet guy. You're such a good guy. You can't let them get to you. You can't let them do this to you. You're letting it get to you. And like, and that's probably the beginning. But back to you, to answer the question, we started this and that. I ended up um, losing my contract in West Palm Beach. And then I was contract looking- to what in West Palm? I was, I was going to, I took a job in West Palm Beach. And um, I ended up losing it. The hospital decided to part ways with me. They said By the that way, the other place that me and, uh, that I lived was Fort Lauderdale for a few years too. So I'm, I'm familiar with Palm. What uh, hospital? What, ha what happened in West Palm? What's that? What happened in West Palm? I t well, I was in New York working. My plan was to come back to um, to Florida. I missed my family, and they they offered me a twenty thousand sign on, uh, five thousand relocation, all that good stuff. And I was there on the first day. I remember everything was great. I did the general orientation. And that, but then like all of uh, the middle administration and upper administration comes to introduce you, introduce themselves to everybody in the group. And then one of the two nurses uh, said out loud, like, oh, we have a, 
a, a reality TV personality in the room, Scott from TLC. And of course, the mystery show is like, what show? What? This, that, and the other? Because people don't realize when they're doing a, they may think that this is the process, but when you get hired at a hospital, uh, the typical background is um, they verify your license, they verify your education, they verify your experience. You do a drug screen and a criminal background check. So that's the process. And I meet all the criteria. They don't go to social media, type in, oh, let's type in his name. It's not how it works. But then once I started there, then they start asking me the administration, like, what shows are you on? I'm like, well, I was on this and this and that. I'm like, oh, okay. And I, they were all like talking and I could sense something was right. And then I worked the second day within respiratory department orientation, had a great day, acclimated myself very quickly to computer charting because I've been doing this so long. I know like Cerner, I know Epic, I know like charting systems is like one, two, three. And then I, I got called in to say, hey, they uh, like the, my director said, they want to, the HR wants to see you or something. And um, I'm not sure what's going on. And he seemed perplexed about it. I was like, well, do you know? He goes, no, I just told me that you need a report down there. And they came out and told me that we're going to part ways with you. We don't feel like you align with the our vision statement and our mission statement. And we're going to let you go. So I didn't get my, re I didn't even get my relocation assistance. I spent two trips back and forth to New York. I spent $3,100 on that. I didn't get that either. And that was it. So, um, you know, I don't cry over spilled milk. It is what it is. There's a lot of jobs out there for me. So I ended up um, deciding to do travel contracts again. And I got this contract in West Virginia. I'm not going to say where. I'm not going to say what city. And um, I was looking at housing options because they give you, you can take the housing allowance or they provide housing. And that's tax-free money. And that's part of your stipend. So um, I, I took it, but I was looking at options. And then I said, hey, I'm looking for options for how, and I, you know, so many people follow me and it's like, you know, you get like good tips. Like when I went to New York to do, to work in New York for a couple months in December, um, NYPD police officer, hey, I got a basement for you. I love you on the show. You can have it for 1500 a month. I was all over it. I was like, oh, this is great. So I was hoping the same thing would work out. And then it turned out to be Amanda. And, and Amanda like, hey, I have a basement. And I can't say how far she is, but I could say that I brought my well, kids. Don't, don't give the address out. No, that's no, fine. I'm not in the city. So it worked out that um, I brought my camper on the second trip. This this is my camper. I bought a brand new camper, and people make fun of it. But I don't know why they make fun of it. Also, I like in her basement so you're in a camper. Therapist. I'm saving lives. This is what I do. I uh, a lot of travelers have campers and they and they do travel contracts, you know. So um so she offered me her place to stay because I'm doing like uh three nights on and four days off. And then the four days off I'll stay at her place in the basement. You know, like I fixed it up down there. And then and then the other three days I have a brand new camper. So you've, my... been, you've been staying on a camper uh, on her property. No, 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 no. I have a camper at a different place that's far from the hospital. So you're not I'm, with Amanda anymore. I'm not going to say the distance of how far the hospital is. I'm not going to talk about any of that. Okay, it's so do not, you live or not live with Amanda? In another city of West Virginia. And Amanda lives in another city of West Virginia. And I'm not going to say how far they are. Where you don't have at. to name the city. That, that's fine. You don't have uh, to. We don't want to dox anybody. Uh, Trust me, they will spend these keyboard warriors hard at work. It's not going to happen. So you spend half your time with Amanda and half your time in the camper. Is that yeah. safe to say? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I do. Okay. I'm doing nights. And then I, I was able to do the, the cool thing is they let me do let, let me knock them out in a row. So I'll do three on and then four days off. OK, that's all. Like, you know, I'm not, I, I don't want you know, I'm just making that clear. Like now, I I don't discuss work. I don't discuss anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that you do. No. Well, I I, I wouldn't I'm, tell anybody anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't get into that. Like you know. No, don't, like, and, and don't even tell. You know. I would only tell your business to people that you know in real life. To be honest with you, because oh, like, you know. me. yeah. I don't. I don't. Now forget about it. It's like after the West Palm thing. I'm like, forget it, man. These people are trying to ruin my life, and it's like. It, it's like, and, and where's where's the network to back me up? Where's anything? No, they don't, they don't give, 
I'm so done with the network. I'm moving on to other things. Well, so. I think we kind of, you know, and I saw that that article and the post you did with like the TLC, uh, <laughs> the the toilet paper. Uh, I think we all pretty much know where you stand with that. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be unprofessional. I hear you. That's what I think of that. Okay. Yeah. Can, uh, can you read? <laughs> hey, can you hear it? Let me turn it up for you. Is there something in my eye? So, like, how do you feel about, like, you know, um, and there was, like, a thing, like, that you were, like, asking Amanda to be, like, your Valentine and people well, thought it was inappropriate that. because, like, you guys are kind of, like, you know, like, I, I don't, living together, like, you know, you're not living together as a couple, right? There's no romantic no. anything there, right? I'm staying in her basement, but I'm saying that um, I think she's cute. I mean, I would, I meant, but at the same time, um i really gotten to know her and i don't you i feel like my circle of friends has gotten very small just and um you need to keep a small circle of friends yeah yeah but here's the thing here's the thing she's really slid in to be like my rock because of anybody in my circle of friends she can relate to what i'm going through like she was hated we we both are hated but not to my magnitude like she's like man scott like i'm getting like uh, like 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 calls like they're gonna call dcf because i'm you're staying at my house in the basement and this and that like i'm like for what like i meant i've never been arrested i talked about the in the other podcast i'm like oh he's like a pedophile what the hell never been arrested in my this is you know what the hell with all those haters like i don't give a crap what they think i wipe my ass no with... and there's a lot of like you know flat you know bold face lying and that's a sin i if it were me i probably wouldn't have advertised that i was staying with her or if a man you know well was... yeah but it started off innocent and we kind of and we just having fun like you know like and it doesn't matter how innocent it is well i know but it is what it is i'm not gonna it, it is what it is and that's what happened. I'm not going to sit there and I could have, should have done this. At the end of the day, we're, we're, we're dealing with it. We're making the best of it. And, and at, if anything, she's helped me a lot with my approach to dealing with a lot of stuff. And now I'm just like, I don't even entertain it. Just block him. Um, I'm not going to be baited anymore. Just let them think whatever they want, whatever. But you're, so like, as of right now, how would you um, how would you say you're doing? Like, great in life. Uh, in, yeah, life. I'm doing great. Like, um, my, um, I'm excited. I have uh, somebody representing me now, and they're and they're working on. I'm getting um, submitted for a lot of different things, and I'm just waiting. Um, I'm just waiting. I gotta wait. I, I, my contract's gonna be up in June, so I'm waiting for more doors to open after that and that, that i'm excited about and um i am um, probably doing my last contract as respiratory therapist and i'm gonna focus on um, pursuing other options that that i think are gonna fall into place other options as in like tv or yeah yeah, yeah. i say like you know that's great tv but like you know it seems like you have a passion for like the respiratory therapy like you know you no. have all your kid, you have all your kids you know, like you know occupational therapists yeah. or I, I inspired them to do it but i've lost my passion i've done this for 28 years in the last four years with the hardest years of my life with during covid and everything else and i'm so burned out and i'm ready for a change i'm excited about it do you think you'll be able to handle like you know all the, the more TV stuff, like say, like you're like on a bigger network. Say, like, well, I, I feel like they have a different. Uh, I feel like the following is. I, I've talked to other people from other networks, and they said, yeah, the TLC is the worst, man. You get the most haters and stuff like that. I, I just talked to some different people. I became friends with, uh, like, uh, I was talking to Ruthie from Real World, and we I became, saw your post from Ruthie. Yeah. I, I saw that. She's gotten me in contact with different people from um, MTV and because I think half of their seasons are owned by Meta and the other half is, are owned by, um, uh, what is it, I'm trying to top of my tongue, but Meta and who, who was the other one? Uh, Paramount, Paramount. A lot and, of people are asking if you are still um, with Nikki or in her DMs or, or if you're single, no, is he not? No, he no, 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 no. I, I think I, the only thing with Nikki, I think I, when I was in New York, what I remember was I knew she lived in Jersey and I was in New York and it's very common to do collaborations with people. And I, I've talked to, I talked to Mikey, Mikey lives in New York 
and we've DM'd each other a few times. He's a nice guy. I always thought it's great if you can collaborate because it helps build your followers and stuff like that. Right. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think I reached out to her. She can pull the DM up. I think I just said, hey, you ever want to collaborate, let me know. Because I wasn't sure what part of Jersey she was in, but because I worked contracts in Jersey and New York. So I think that was the only thing. I wasn't anything like I was hitting on or anything like that. And by the way, like, what's the Viking stuff all about? <laughs> Well, I'm Norwegian. Uh, it's not like I'm. That's what I said. I knew it. Yeah, I'm 80, 85 percent Norwegian and fourteen percent Scandinavian. So, my, uh, it was more like, do I know that I'm a Viking? And people were like, well, the Vikings were savages, and it's, uh, people get so analytical about things. It's it's more of a sentimental type thing from me, from the standpoint that my father passed away in two thousand six, and when sorry. I was like. In the 30s, I used to be really, really big. I mean, I'm like, this is not so big. I was like, um, like I'm a very transparent person. So when I was in my 20s and 30s, I had this, um, I played a lot of sports, but then I was always always into uh, fitness and powerlifting. And not so much of bodybuilding, the powerlifting. I had over 500 bench press, 600 squat, 685 deadlift. It was crazy. I was taking anabolic steroids at that time. And that could be, you know, people look at the reasons why I had stroke. Well, you know, there's risk factors. Uh, you know, I've worked real care a long time and I've talked to many intensivists and a risk factor. I probably did anabolic steroids for about eight years, um, mid, late twenties to mid thirties. Um, that's a risk factor. Um, I had to get the COVID vaccination to work in New York. That was a risk factor because there's uh, I had to do the two-step Pfizer and there's a higher risk, you know, and that's not political. There's I've talked to many intensivists that there's higher risk factors. And then the fact that I was working 70 to 80 hours a week during COVID during the worst time, it was always raising my blood pressure up. So, you know, there's many risk factors, but um, yeah, so that, that was a little bit about that. But my dad, I was always, I was bench pressing over 500 at one point, And he says, you're, you're like a Viking. You're like, a, you're built like a Viking and you, you're, you're powerful like the old Vikings were. And it was like his little joke to me. And I think that's where I got that from. All right. I have one more question for you. Um, and I think it's a good one. You know, I know, you know, you, you certainly you've gotten your share of hate and I know I have too. So I'm asking you, um, if there's one thing that you could take back that you did, whether being on the show or online, that you were like, oh, God damn, Scott, you shouldn't have said this. You shouldn't have done that. Like, I would say I would say the moment where I had the breakdown, it was almost like a little nervous breakdown when my cards all got maxed out in that video where I was in my car and that was like May. That was a hard moment because I was dealing with that. I was dealing with Liz um, feeling like I was being used for money. It was a really hard time for me. And I was starting the process again for the bankruptcy. And you go from having money to not having money again. It was a really hard time. And then you're getting all this hate every day. And it really took a toll on me. And I felt like I just was just trying to express myself. But it didn't get the desired effect. It was just more people making fun of me and laughing at me and that, that bothered me and it really made things worse for me. And then I would say that drunken live, I, I, I was like, you know, I, I had another episode where I just kind of was letting things get to me. And then, but then, you know, do I have any regrets in my life? No, I can't say I ever have regrets because I want to think even when you get, these are the trials and tribulations of our life and we get tested every day. And even the worst things that happen from us, I think there's lessons to be learned and hopefully we grow from it. Is there any cast members that you still talk to now that your buddies other than Amanda? Um, well, Riley, uh, I've talked to Mikey, um, Dr. Carter from my season, April Carter from my season. There's only a few. I mean, the few that want to be in my life, you know, um, I've had others reach out to me and, um, they, you know, talked about collaborating, but I didn't really care for them and I didn't want anything to do with them. So I didn't even respond to the DM. And, you know, you, you've done your share of interviews, uh, you know, recently and, and, you know, is there anything that you want the world to know that you haven't said already somewhere? Um, I, I would say, you know, don't judge a book by the cover and understand that, um, 
you know, I'm growing and I'm evolving every day and I own a lot of my mistakes as much as they think. This is for my people that really are on the fence or care that, you know, I, I'm trying to, even my content, I'm trying to start putting up because I, I spent so much time trying to defend myself that I'm losing sight of who I am and that people, I think, fell in love with me for my dance videos and, and me doing my parodies and like today i posted the whole john cena thing like at the movie theater i yeah. saw that that was cute yeah and i'm going back to doing like things that make me happy and and rather not spend i think misery needs company and sometimes i get baited and i get sucked into that and i'm not going to do that anymore all right i think we're good uh like uh you know i enjoyed this and again I don't know what's going to come at me now because, you know, again, I haven't watched you. I, I didn't watch your seasons. I, I, I heard, you know, the word on the curve stuff, which I asked you about. And I'm, I'm good. Uh, I enjoyed this interview. It's, it was different for me because I never watched one second of you on TV. So yeah. this new territory for me. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I, it, but at the same time, you go in with, with and you're not tainted by the narrative. You, you're being open-minded. And that's probably the best approach, you know. And then you know um, maybe we could do a follow up or or whatever. Um, but uh, yep, another network. I, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you to the people in the chat. Um, I'm gonna end this live. I will do an after show. I'm gonna end this now though. So um, Scott, Scott, you hang around. Don't don't hang up. Okay. I, just, you know, I want to have like a few words with you. Good okay. words. No, <laughs> yelling. Right. No, I want to talk to you after the show just to get your your feeling. Guys, um, thank you so much for being here. This was great. Yes, after show, I'll set up in a few minutes. I just want to talk to Scott for a few seconds, and then I'll see you guys in like 15. I just want to eat something real quick and like you know smoke a cigarette. So I'll see you guys in like 15, 20 minutes. You can't be um, smoking. Tory therapist in me. You can't be smoking cigarettes. And I have asthma. Suck on that. Oh um, my god. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do on the next live? I'm gonna collaborate with you. I'm gonna do a pulmonary function test on you. We're gonna and see I have you. asthma, but yeah. yeah, that's me. But I do need a cigarette. I'm not gonna lie, because I'm like I I I gotta probably smoke the whole pack while I was live with you. Uh, because oh, I didn't know. I honestly I didn't know what to expect. I know that you have a super bad like kind of like not good rep, and I know I don't. You know, I'm, mine's not that sterling either. So I I figured, honestly, I figured that like you know they see the two of us together. Then, you know, the, so, the enemy of my enemy is yeah. my. Yeah. Right? Well, I was never your enemy. Like I. No. I didn't know kidding. You. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, and then like, you know, we had the, the issues with starting for like a half hour. I'm like, oh God, John, this is God saying, don't do this interview. Like, that's what I was thinking the whole time. So well, no, no, I'm happy that we did. Hopefully, hopefully your team, Scotty, hopefully team Amanda now. We'll see. <laughs> I'm happy that I did. All right. So good night, everybody. I'll see you on the after show. Give me like a, ooh, it's 11 o'clock, a half hour. And then, um, you, Scott, you say bye, everybody. And I'm ending it.